Yeah, we're switching to cricket now in the Sportsmax Zone as round four of the West Indies Championship bowed off today with four matches across three countries. Uh, let's begin our day one recap at Sabina Park where Jamaica Scorpions are on or in action against the West Indies Academy team. Ricardo Chambers live on location. Yeah, thank you so much, Lance and Mariah. Well, it's been quite a day of cricket here at Savina Park. 344 runs scored, 10 wickets taken, and quite a few blunders as well on day one of this fourth round of Cricket West Indies four-day encounter between the Jamaica Scorpions in fourth position in the table, taking on the West Indies Academy. They find themselves in seventh position in the table. So let's tell you what happened then on day number one. The West Indies Academy sent back 300 and 24 all out the jamaica scorpions facing six overs before the close of play and getting to 20 without loss let's give you the details of the west indies academy innings because they got off to um, a rather watchful start they got to 42 in the first hour of play but by the time they got to lunch they were blazing at 121 for two kadeen elaine was the star performer in the morning session with his second 50 of the season getting to 52 he was the last man out and on the stroke of lunch actually and yeah he had a very good innings it included five fours and three sixes all three of those sixes came off pete salmon in one over he hit him over mid off first of all then swung him over deep mid wicket and then the next ball over deep backwards square leg then in the post lunch session joshua dorn he was the man who took charge he eventually top scored with 83 132 deliveries he hit 12 fours and one six early in his innings played a few lovely forceful shots through the offside square of the wicket and then as he built the innings and progressed he also played brilliantly through the onside in front of the wicket it was quite a fantastic knock and enjoyable under 17 years old joshua dorn making his first class debut but he looked like a man who has been playing at this level for quite a while remember he played for the west indies on the 19 at the world on the 19s at the world cup um his highest score there was only 11 at that tournament only got into double figures once but yeah he looked quite a class at here today jordan johnson the jamaican also had a good knock 61 he had a lot of luck though jordan johnson he was um dropped on 26 there was a run out chance when he was on 25 as well but he made full use of the opportunities and went on to score 61 and then joshua james at the back end with an entertaining um 36 from 26 deliveries taking the west indies academy to 324 all out as i pointed out earlier they were 121 for two in the first session at lunch they got to 237 for four at t so adding 116 runs in that session and then in the third session six for 87 is what they got to be bowled up for 324 in fact at one stage it looked as if they would have gotten well over 350 on this opening day but it was not to be and then when the scorpions faced their six overs they got to 20 without loss kurt mckenzie in the absence of the team's leading run scorer chadwick Ponton, who is away on lanka premier league duties promoted to open the batting from his regular number three position he's on 10 and Carlos brown who has gone pretty well this season he too is on 10 and they will take the jamaicans into day number two of this contest i have with me joshua dorn who top scored for the west indies academy as i pointed out quite a fine knock from the 17 year old barbadian and joshua it was a quality innings from you today talk me through the innings and the mindset as you went out in the middle to play your first first class innings the openers are quite watchful in that first hour but as soon as you went out there um, you were positive and, and in a way aggressive as well um, talk me through that well to be honest um, to be honest the guys were just rolling dragging the ball shot so we just go there jump the building and we'll see the breeze I didn't think there were many devils out there on the pitch assess it for me from your standpoint um, the pitch was a big pitch to be honest but it was like a little bit of bumps as well. 
Yeah, unfortunately, some audio issues there with uh, Joshua Dorn after his uh, big knock today on his first class debut. And Ricardo did point out that he didn't do very well for the West Indies in the Under-19 World Cup. But he was one of the top batsmen going in in the warm-up matches and in the build-up matches and the preparatory matches going in. Dorn was a fairly heavy and consistent scorer. Disappointing for him, Mariah, that he didn't shine at the Under-19 World Cup, but he's still young and obviously has a lot of talent. He obviously impressed Ricardo. Yeah, and the thing is, I would have loved to hear what he was saying to Ricardo because I love to hear from these upcoming batsmen that we don't regularly get interviews from, especially he made that 83 today of 132 deliveries. You can see he appears a little bit shy in his responses. From the little that I could hear, I was really intrigued to hear what he had to say about Lance. I'm hoping that this is not the end of it. He's going to continuously score so we can catch him in another interview. Yeah, man, I'm pretty sure. Now heading over to Trinidad and Tobago where there were two matches played, the first of which saw the home side, TNT Red Force, winning the toss and electing to field against the leaders, Windward Islands Volcanoes. Uh, that match at Queen's Park Oval, the Volcanoes... Uh, 191 all out, Alec Athenes 56 and Sunil Ambris 35, two men with West Indies experience. Uh, Anderson Phillip picking up 5 for 37 and Cara Pierre, the left arm spinner, 3 for 21. So TNT having a good opening day there uh, because they have replied strongly at 8 and 9 for 1 of 27 overs with uh, Kieran Otley. 47 and uh, Vikesh Mohan 34 not out. So at 89 for one, replying to 191, uh, Trinidad and Tobago Red Force having probably their best day of the series so far. Red Force trailing by 102 runs, but with all of nine, wi nine wickets in hand. Meanwhile, the combined campuses and colleges battled to 273 in 81.2 overs after winning the toss and electing to bat at the Sir Frank Warren Memorial Ground against the Leeward Islands Hurricanes. Amari Goodrich led the CCC fight with 75. And uh, as we said, 273 all out there. Uh, Daniel Doram, the spinner, with 4 for 37. And Jeremiah Lewis, 3 for 54, the fast bowler. And the Leewards uh, in reply, 20 for 1. So the Hurricanes trading by 253 runs. And uh, a pretty strong effort there from the combined campuses and colleges. Uh, Kisa Carty and Kyron Powell, the not out batsman at the moment but um, uh, let's move over to Antigua now where the Guyana Harpy Eagles got to stumps in a commanding position at 231 for five after being inserted by the Barbados Pride Kepler and Anderson top scoring for the Harpy Eagles with 87 and um, Tevin Imlak 55 also getting a half century there bowling for the Barbados Pride Jason Holder two for 29 and Jamal Warrican one for 31 so 231 for five, the Guyana Harpy Eagles, defending champions in the regional four-day championship. And uh, there is Kevlin Anderson batting and uh, the uh, Jason Holder bowling there. And uh, the uh, Harpy Eagles, uh, their title defense hasn't been going well so far this season, even though there is still more cricket to be played. Yeah, um, well, we'll have to monitor, Lance, how they carry out um, because the women were really, really good when compared to the men um, start this season. But of course, it's still a bit more cricket to be played. I'm happy to see um, Barbadian Jason Holder joining his Barbados team and a lot of the West Indies players as well joining the setup now. Yeah, I was looking at the latest test, test cricket rankings, player rankings today, and Jason Holder still ranked number five see? on the all-rounders list. He, he and Kyle Mayer is at 10th. The only West Indians at the moment ranked in the top 10 yeah. in the test test um, rankings, whether batting, bowling, or or in the all-rounder spots. So um, good to see Holder back playing some good. domestic cricket. And um, let's see let's see what will happen here for the Barbados yeah. Pride because um, the Guyana Harpy Eagles are intent on trying to um, improve what they've uh, been able to deliver so far. I don't want to say that they miss Leon Johnson as a captain because as a captain, Leon uh, had some magic and uh, his uh, leadership of the Guyana Harp Eagles really, really um, impressive over the years. And he has retired now. And uh, the Guyana Harp Eagles trying to keep their, 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 their image up uh, in the absence of their long-standing captain. Let's go to break. When we come back, interactive with Mara leading the show. Yeah.